Hello and welcome to TPM's 4-Minute Friday. Today we're going to take a look at Revit and specifically inside of Revit the uh, scope box command. The workflows associated with that, how you use it, and frankly why you would want to use it. This is a command a lot of people are not familiar with. I want to bring this to some people's attention and show you how it allows you to isolate projects of your project and really accomplish what some people are trying to do on their own without the use of scope box. So let's flip on over to Revit and take a look and see how this works. Okay. Here we are inside of Revit. I've got a little project to uh, lay out and uh, you know to show you how to work with these scope boxes. The intent here is we have a portion of the building down here on the bottom, which I'm going to call core, and then we have a wing up here on the right side. And we want to have each of these in their own view so we can place them on their own separate sheets for documenting purposes. So duplicating views, that's not a problem, but you'll see the scope box uh, does a couple of tricks up its sleeve to help us out. So what I want to do is work with the scope box command. You'll see that under the view command up top here. And we go into our scope box. So I'm laying out the scope box in much the same way I would with a cropped region. I'm going to go ahead and put a second one in here as well. And that's really kind of the way you'd want to look at this is uh, we want to define our scope box to indicate what we want our views to be uh, isolated to. So I just rotate the scope box into position and uh, you know indicate what I want that scope box to show as far as a view goes. Along the same lines uh, of naming it, you know, like I just described with core and wing, we want to have these scope boxes also named. It helps if we uh, go ahead and name it maybe for its intended use so everybody on the team can uh, understand its purpose and what it's trying to show us. Along the same lines, not only, not only do we have our scope box set up with multiple uh, core and a wing or however many scope boxes we need, we also want to do the, the basic Revit duplicate views for the same purpose. So I'm going to duplicate my view here and rename this core and uh, duplicate one more time and rename that one wing. Now why do we do that? Well. So uh, we've got this here in place. What's that going to do for us? Well, what it's going to do for us, let's go to our core. So we have a core view, but I only want to see the core. And that can be easily done by altering the properties of the view. Not the scope box itself right now, but the properties of the view. So in this view, the core view, if I scroll down my properties list, you'll see I can associate a scope box to this view. And I'm going to associate the core and there it goes. It crops down our view to where the scope box is set to. We do the same thing on the wing. So with the wing, again we're looking at the view properties. Scroll down until we see the scope box and we'll associate it to the wing scope box. This one's a little bit different though. This is where some of the kind of cool stuff happens because you'll notice when I uh, apply it, it actually rotates the uh, image back to horizontal huge benefit here of course is now our text is horizontal and our annotations are readable. We can now get horizontal and our vertical text and animations um, by using these scope boxes. What else can we do with this? Well we're not done yet. Let's take a look at some other things we can do. We also can and frankly want to associate our datum objects to the scope boxes. So in this case I've got my two grids and I would like to associate those to my core. So you'll see it actually controls the location of these grids. Go ahead and do the same thing on the wing side as well. So with the wing selected, I'm sorry, the grid selected, I want to associate them to the wing scope box. So now when we take a look at our core, we are almost there, but you might say, well, we can see it's cropped down, but we also have these grids that are not related to or relevant to this particular core object, as well as the fact that we can still see the uh, scope box. Well, there's a little bit more we can do with this. What we want to do is say, in this view, the core, we want to control the visibility of the other objects in the scope box. So with the core view current, which I am here, I'm going to pick the scope box that represents the wing and now I want to say well when do I want to see the wing scope box while I'm inside the core view. So what I've, we've got selected the wing scope box and I want to alter the core view so that the wing scope box is not visible in my core view. 
and sure enough, turns off. And we can do the same thing on the other side as well. So if we go to our wing, now our wing view is current. We want to select the scope box that represents the core. That's what the properties are here. But we want to say that in our current wing view, which is here, we do not want to see the core scope box. So that allows us to again isolate and have it automatically controlled by the use of the scope box. So we can still work on the overall. Uh, however, we would still want to annotate and work within each view. Also note that the, uh, the uh, scope box is also a 3D envelope. So you can certainly work with this scope box in a uh, height restriction as well. So if you have a particular type of building where you have different heights or portions of the project, you can associate those vertically through space. And the scope box can be tied into the floor plans, sections, and elevations. So you can turn off those relevant parts of the project that are not needed for using the scope box. So hopefully that explains how you work with scope box and uh, maybe you can adopt some of these workflows. It, it really solves a lot of problems with trying to be able to isolate and work with the project in pieces and parts. That's it for now. I appreciate your time and talk to you later.